Hey everybody. In today's tutorial video, I wanted to take a different approach and rather than focusing on a super tactical focused topic like how do you get X done using the REST API, I wanted to put a different spin on it and try to just better understand the REST API itself. So I found myself when I was getting into using the REST API uh, that not everything was super obvious to me in how to make the most out of all the different REST API uh, endpoints that are available to us. And so I'm hoping that this video just helps other potential data devs get into the space and maybe helps you, if you encounter a challenge in your Tableau ecosystem, better helps you uh, break down certain barriers to, to being able to comfortably say, oh, there's a functionality for this in the Tableau Server REST API reference, and it's gonna be no problem for me to write a little bit of code that will make use of that functionality. So I don't wanna just sit here and talk <laughs> without showing you anything for too long. So um, let's just dive in. Right now we're looking at uh, a Tableau online site. This is my uh, dev site that I got for free through the Tableau developer program. Uh, shameless plug there. Uh, go sign up, you'll get one of these too. But we can see I have two users and uh, what we're going to kind of play around with is use the REST API reference to get information about these users and then add a user to the site um, using the REST API. But we're not so much going to focus on mechanically how do you make that happen. What I really want to focus on is uh, what is it that the REST API needs from us in order to make these things happen? And how does something like Tableau API lib, which is a library, uh, a Python library, you know, how does this help us more quickly communicate with Tableau server? Um, and there are other libraries out there too, like Tableau server client, and I'd also point out that you don't need a library. You could write this stuff from scratch. Uh, and we'll point out the various things that you would need to put in place in order to make those uh, requests that you have come to life and allow Tableau Server to provide whatever information you want back to you or publish new content to your server for you. So. The, the area that we're playing in here is the Tableau Server REST API reference. And I was talking already about getting users. So um, just to demonstrate how, how I typically use the REST API reference, I would, I'd first just Google Tableau Server REST API, and then uh, usually that lands you out here at this documentation. And once you're out here, you can just hit you know, command F or control F and then start searching for something. Like if you know you want information about your users, that's fine. But maybe you know you want to get some information about your users. We can see that this narrows down the scope of my search a little bit. And this is honestly probably the first step in being able to figure out if the REST API is going to be useful for you in any particular uh, endeavor is you come out to the API reference and you see, is there a function for the thing I am trying to do? Oh, I want to get users on my site. Looks like there's something here for me. So now once you click on this, um, this is where when I was first starting out with the REST API, I would kind of see this and I would, I would lose all hope, right? Um, unless you're a, a hardcore developer, you know, this is probably, you read this like a, like a grocery list or something. But for, for people who are new to the space, this can be a little bit daunting. Like, what is a response code? What is the request body? So uh, before we get into all the ins and outs of what this is, um, let's just run a couple requests, um, API requests inside of the context of a library and see you know, what, what is it that the library is actually doing for us and how does that translate into uh, how that Python code communicates with the Tableau server. So in this case, we can see that we are going to be getting information about our users. So let's hop into this uh, Python code. I'm in a Python Jupyter Notebook, and I'm going to import Tableau Server Connection from Tableau API Lib. I'm also going to import some querying functions here uh, that we may or may not use. I always keep those handy. But uh, this isn't really so much important. If you want to know more about Tableau API Lib itself, 
Uh, there is a video linked in the description of this one called Getting Started with Tableau API Lib. Uh, for this video, you could just be content to know that uh, it's just the library I'm using to communicate with Tableau Server or Tableau Online. And I'm just plugging in some configuration information here so that we know what site I'm connecting to and that I actually have credentials to connect. Uh, so I'm entering that information and then I'm coming down here. I am creating a connection to that Tableau online site and I'm signing in. And now let's just take a look at this first thing I wanna run. So get users on site. That just happens to have the exact same name as the name of this endpoint that's documented out here in the Tableau server uh, API reference. So that's not a coincidence. It's just that this library um, makes a method for each one of those endpoints that we see in the documentation. So let's go ahead and run this and then take a look at what the, uh, the request returned to us. So here we stored whatever the server response is inside user's request. And underneath the hood, um, what Tableau API lib is using, and I'm sure what Tableau server client is using, um, there, there's a Python library that all of these other libraries usually uh, tend to use to communicate to servers, and it's called the requests library. So without getting into the weeds there, we can know that the, requ the requests library is going to return us an object that has a status code, it has the content inside of it. Uh, it's just a way for us to get a, a nice package back from the server. And in this case, if we look at the status code that belongs to that server response, we're going to see that it's a status code 200. And out here in the documentation, we could scroll down and we could see, uh, is that good or is that bad? Looks like it's good. That's the response that we would expect if everything went according to plan. Okay, so then what if we want the actual information about our users, right? Like here, if I type in users request, it doesn't look like I'm getting anything. I'm getting that, it's just printing the, uh, the status code, the response code that I got. So the actual way we do this is we tap into the dot JSON property of that request. And in this case, that's what I want. I want a JSON representation of the data I was asking for. And we can see I have two users, just like we saw out here on Tableau Online, and I'm getting information about them. So that's nice, but we're not really in this tutorial for the functionality of getting information about users. We want to understand, you know, why is the REST API um, behaving the way it is? So we can see down here, I'm, I'm tapping into a couple um, properties or a couple attributes of my, my connection. Remember up here, I said that uh, my Tableau server connection is gonna be stored in this variable con standing for connection. So down here, when I inspect the active endpoint of my connection, this is basically in the Tableau API lib library, what this is doing is it's telling me what the last endpoint I hit was. So uh, you could think of this endpoint, this active endpoint as being a uh, URL, you know, an address of where, where Python is gonna go knock for information. So it knows that this is where my Tableau online site is. Uh, then it knows which API version I'm using and it knows my site ID. And then by stringing that all together, it has the correct place to look. Then if I was um, adding any information to my server, I would also have a request body. In this case, the request body is going to be empty because I'm just getting information from the server but in a couple minutes, we'll see what this would look like if I was posting information to the server. Uh, there are going to be some headers that I need to supply, and this one is particularly important. This is uh, basically the keys that I have to my Tableau server, and this was given to me when I called this sign-in method. Now, where does sign-in come from? Um, I'm not going to get into the weeds of the authentication process, but we can see that there is a endpoint here documented for signing in. And what the sign in process is going to do is it's going to return to us um, that authentication token. So 
Uh, we could look down here in the response body, you get something back that's that authentication token. So what's going on in the background here, the Tableau API lib is receiving that token when it does the sign-in process, and then it stores it somewhere inside this connection object so I can reuse it. Uh, now at the end of this whole thing, we'll sign out and that will invalidate the token, which means that if somebody you know, was snooping on my activity and they somehow got my token, um, once I sign out, it deactivates that so nobody could just recycle that token. Anyways, moving right along, um, let's just say we come out here to this endpoint, we go back to get users and um, we see that there are these different variations on the, uh, the kind of endpoint pattern here. Like when we, when we see what we just did with getting our information about our users, we can see that the endpoint we were hitting followed the pattern described where it's uh, API, API version, sites, site ID, and then users. That matches exactly what we see here. Uh, but what are all these different variations for? So without explaining it too much, uh, I want to give you an example where maybe we want to get more fields out of our response. And we can do this by specifying a field expression. Specifically down here, if we read about this, we can see that one field expression would be this underscore all underscore, uh, which is going to give us all of the available fields about a user. So for whatever reason, the Tableau Server REST API by default protects some of these fields, like the email address and the full name, and just doesn't return that. So here's an example of how we could use the, the library, the Tableau API lib library, to add an extra URL parameter. Uh, URL parameters you can add to most Tableau API methods by specifying a parameter dict. And in future videos, we'll, we'll dissect this a bit more. Like for example, how could you query a visual um, from Tableau server and then apply a certain filter to it? In this case, let's just keep it simple and specify that um, this key doesn't really matter. I'm just, I could name this anything arbitrary. I could call this, you know, my key. And uh, what really matters is the value. So you could, you could pass multiple parameters here into this parameter dict, and it's just going to append any of the values it finds um, to whatever request you're doing. So in this case, we specify that we want all of the fields by doing that fields equals all. And uh, this isn't random. You do have to follow a, a particular pattern here in how you use these fields. So if you were getting into the weeds here, you could, you could read more about this and get the ins and outs of how that works. But let's just see it in practice. And when I run this, we'll notice that whereas before we did not have a field named email or full name, now we get that field email and full name. I'll also note that I'm on Tableau Online, so my email address just happens to be the same as my username. But anyways, we are getting more fields now. And if we inspect the active endpoint, we can see that that, uh, that endpoint has actually changed. It no longer ends at users. Instead, we get this little question mark, which means that there are additional URL parameters. And we get that fields equals underscore all underscore. Uh, we can see that we still have an empty request and we still have the same headers. All right, so hopefully this is starting to paint a pattern for you. Every request that we send to the REST API is going to have an endpoint that we're hitting. It's going to have a request body, and it's going to have headers which contain that authentication token that lets us get in. So one final thing here for this video I wanna point out is a scenario where we do have a request body, just so you can see what this looks like. So let's add a user to the site Again, add user to site is going to mirror some documentation we could find um, in the REST API reference. Add user to site. Let's click on this. Um, we're going to see here that, again, we have a URL pattern that our request is going to need to follow. We also have a request body that needs to follow this pattern and the response code we can expect if everything goes right is going to be 201. 
So let's run this. We're going to add Doc Holiday as a viewer and let's take a look at the response code we get first of all. 201, so that matches what we would expect to see if this was successful. And then let's see what the actual response body contains. So in this case, we're seeing information about the new user we just created. Uh, this could perhaps be useful if we wanted to turn around and add this user to a group. We could take this ID and then do something with it, like uh, add it to various groups. But let's take a look at the endpoint here. We can see that this, this endpoint is actually the exact same as when we were getting information about our users. So how would Tableau Server know that this time we want to add a user rather than get a user? Uh, it's very subtle, but up here in the URL pattern that it specifies, you can see that this time we're doing a post request, whereas earlier we were doing a get request. So in that server communication world, you have um, you have these different types of requests. Some things are only meant to retrieve information. Other things can update information, like a put request. Other things uh, publish information for you know, the first time or overwrite information, that would be a post request. And then you can also remove information or content using a delete. So uh, we see this same endpoint, but now it's doing something different because it's being issued with a post request. We can check our active request and in this case, we uh, have a user that has a name and a site role specified. And then we have the same headers that we saw before. Um, so just to put your mind at ease in terms of this, um, this X Tableau auth uh, header, let's see what happens if I sign out and then I try to get information about my users again. So I come back up here and I run uh, users JSON equals users request dot JSON and I attempt to get the same information. Oh, whoops, I have to actually run the request. So let's run this, get the status code. Now instead of 200, it's 401. And then if we uh, take a look at that JSON body, we can see that I'm no longer authorized. So no authentication credentials were provided. So what did we just see? Um, hopefully what we're doing is starting to, to see how, how you can read the REST API reference documentation to find what it is that you need to accomplish and then um, you know, identify, map a REST API endpoint to that task. I'm trying to get information about users. Well, I can use the get users on site endpoint. Um, maybe I'm trying to get information about groups. There's a you know, query groups on site type method you'd be able to find. So uh, pretty much anything you want to do, you can come out here to the REST API reference, look for that thing, and then if it doesn't exist, you can take it from there. But uh, if it does exist, you're always going to be following this pattern of you need to specify the URL endpoint where the server is going to be getting that information or putting that information. Um, then you have to have a request body if you are adding new content to the server. A lot of times your request body will be just empty if you're simply retrieving information. And then you also need those headers, which will be specifying, um, among other things, the authentication token that you have. Now, in this case, I'm also specifying um, what type, like how do I want that information packaged for me when it's returned from the server? And I do that as application JSON. Um, other libraries such as Tableau Server Client will specify XML. Uh, I prefer JSON. I feel like it works more natively with Python. Um, and that's just my own preference. But so with this, hopefully you have some building blocks on how to start to interpret the Tableau Server REST API reference and bring it to life for your own projects. Uh, we will have future videos that dive a little bit deeper into uh, some of these inner workings. Uh, but my hope here is that this lays the groundwork. So thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you in future videos. See you next time.